Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another weekly update about news and information on DCS World and my thoughts and opinions on those things. I'm your host, of course, Prickly Hedgehog. Join me now as we look at some very exciting developments. Nothing major this week in terms of uh, patches, although we do have some really exciting things coming forth that I know many, many uh, people have been waiting for and are significant in their own right, even though we don't have a long uh, show this week. So, what am I talking about? We're talking about the AI improvements to combat. We're talking about the damage model to the World War II birds, which is going to come out later this month. And, of course, they're also throwing in a little bit of uh, a plug for the Raven 1 campaign for the FA-18C. If you're not familiar with that, it's a great campaign. You will need, of course, Eagle Dynamics, wonderful FA-18C first before you can enjoy it. But let's start with the AI combat news, which I think is fantastic. So uh, many of you are aware that the AI are a little bit hit and miss sometimes in the game, and it's been a little bit of an issue for Eagle Dynamics to get their head around. I think this will be very significant because this is the kind of thing they will need as they move forward towards a uh, dynamic campaign in the future, especially if you're a solo player. It's one thing when it's uh, part of a multiplayer, but they're going to need this ultimately as part of that uh, thrust. What are they saying here? Well, they have improved, according to the newsletter this week, the AI, which will encompass variable decision-making protocols dependent on a continuously calculated environment in order to enhance fight, disengage, and run behavior. So this is the focus of this. Don't get too excited if you're expecting a complete revamp of the AI. This is just one component of the AI. Uh, we'll talk about some of that in a little bit here. But So the AI will make emergency landing decisions on land or water, in other words, ditching. Um, it could also react now in case of sudden attacks, even if the, uh, even if the attacker, I was going to say the flanker, even if the attacker is not visible. If there is light damage, it will attempt to evade the unseen attack and search for the attacker. When the damage is more serious, it will evade and RTB where and when possible. Potentially, of course, the damage can be too high, and the only solution for the AI pilot, therefore, is to bail out. So that's mimicking real world. I've got a cat crawling across my desktop here who climbed up the back of the chair. You probably heard that with the claws out, and now has decided she wants to be part of this week's video. Are you going to say something? No. Okay, that's cats for you. So, as I said, this was an ongoing issue that many of you recognize. Jeez Louise, that cat. Um, this was an ongoing issue with the AI. And really? Cats, love testing out gravity. Yes, you proved your theory, gravity works. She just knocked off a whole stack of aircraft manuals onto my computer and onto the floor. All right, I think I'll bother you editing that out because it is what it is. <laughs> um, uh, cats. As I said, this was an ongoing problem for Eagle Dynamics in terms of making the AI behave more realistically. And I know this was actually a subject of a discussion, I believe, by Nick Gray uh, in one of the interviews. And I forget who it was now. Um, who was interviewing it? Might have was it Spudknocker? I don't think it was Spudknocker. Uh, I forget. Anyway, uh, I apologize. So, um, but he had talked about, yeah, okay, some of the AI are not behaving properly. And as I mentioned, this is going to be necessary, I think, as they claw their way forward towards the integration of a dynamic campaign. Now, I know a lot of you, like me, have been asking and asking and asking, when are we going to get a dynamic campaign? And I know that Eagle Dynamics are working on it. One of the comments that was made with regards to that is that it is uh, is a complex thing to build. And it, it has thrown in, I guess, more complex things to be resolved than perhaps what Eagle Dynamics initially um, thought. And, of course, there's a lot of parameters that have to be built into the algorithms for a dynamic campaign to work and also, more importantly, work within the community and the expectations that we have with regards to what that's going to look like. So there's a lot of work ahead yet, I think, but this is a good step, a nice stride in the right direction in terms of making the AI aircraft in the game a little bit more realistic. So, good stuff. All right, the next big topic is the damage model. 
which is uh, at this time I believe it's uh, we're referring to the World War II only. Uh, and those World War II bird fans that have been asking for this, well, here's your answer. It's uh, it's here, but it's right now in the final stages of uh, internal testing. And then later this month, uh, well, the phrase here is at the end of this month, it's going to be released for public testing. And it will also be included for all of the World War II AI bombers as well. So it won't just be for the player aircraft, which is really, really cool. What they're saying here is that each aircraft has unique hydraulics, pneumatic, and electrical systems and materials. So as a result of that, the predicted damage depends on the type of ammunition being used, the munitions velocity, and it's also dependent, of course, on the distance and uh, from the aircraft that is being struck and the location of that impact on the aircraft. As a result, the internal effects, such as things like engine or radiated damage or coolant or air temp uh, temperature variation, likely caused by fluid loss or what have you, uh, it's going to lead to a loss of pressure, loss of control, or other effects. These will be generated um, in a way that corresponds to internal and external visual effects, which is really, really cool. So we have uh, deployed this technology to all of our World War II fighters, and we trust that the long wait will be worth it. And they are also hoping here that it meets your demanding expectations. I'm excited about this. I think it's a very uh, important development and uh, evolution in Eagle Dynamics's um, a game model and obviously hopefully will translate to some of the uh, newer aircraft as well that I believe is still a work in progress although things look pretty good there is more and of course um, the third-party developers are doing their, their bits and pieces as well um, you'll see the odd update I think uh, heat blue did uh, one recently where they talked about some changes to the damage model um, engine flame out that kind of stuff so uh, it's a it's a constantly evolving thing uh, but this is, as I said, is a very important step in the right direction, and I'm very excited to see what it's going to look like at the end of this month. If you're a World War II Warbirds fan, let me know um, how it functions. Maybe we'll get some game time here and, and look at that later this month, see what the difference will be. It's pretty cool. Lastly, uh, Raven 1, the Baltic Dragon um, campaign which was also produced in conjunction with Vincent Aiello, also known as Jello, and um, Kevin Miller, a pilot, I believe, a former pilot, who was the author of the Raven 1 trilogy. And there are 15 missions. There are 2,200 custom voiceovers. Get into the boots of James Flip Wilson, who is a uh, fictional pilot of the VFA-64 Raven Squadron and Fly memorable sorties that closely resemble real-life procedures and operations. If you haven't got this yet and you own the F-18, uh, get into it. I've only had a chance to get a couple of missions in. Right now, I've just been too busy, and then I got sidetracked by the A-10C2, so I'm looking forward to some time off uh, coming up. Um, maybe I can uh, work in a little bit of um, flying time with this, but of course the A-10C, I'm just totally in love with that. Uh, but it's a really good campaign. I've, I've been very impressed with the authenticity of what they've produced, especially the voiceovers, lends that degree of authenticity and realism to the campaign, which uh, is really, really important and stuff that we love as flight simmers. So well worth, worth supporting. And I believe that Baltic Dragon is working on another campaign. I'm, I could be wrong there. I thought there was something with the F-16s. Maybe I mentioned that a few weeks ago. Um, I think it's Baltic Dragon. I could be wrong. But anyway, there is another campaign for the F-16 coming up as well. So stay tuned for that. And that pretty much wraps it up this week. Polychop threw out a few more cool screenshots this uh, week, but we haven't heard anything definitive about the release of that particular aircraft, which is planned for this year. No indication that it's going to be incredibly delayed or it's not going to be ready this year. I, I am still fingers crossed. It's a very important aircraft. Uh, we do need some more choppers in the game, and I know a lot of helicopter pilots are looking forward to its release. So stand by for that. Also, I am hoping probably... I haven't heard anything from, directly from Heat Blur. Uh, I'm on a closed group where some of the developers kind of lurk sometimes. And um, little snippets are thrown out. Somebody threw out a question recently. And I haven't seen a response to that yet. About whether or not we're going to get the A variant this week. And of course, I, uh, no, nothing came through in this week's email, sadly. But I predicted probably mid to late, because normally the big patches are kind of evening out at around 
mid-month. So it's possible that it will come out with a big patch in the next couple of weeks, um, which will bring us to the almost to the end of the month there too. So I, I you know, we might be lucky mid mid October, or possibly late October, uh, which is really only weeks away, so not long at all, which is exciting, of course. All right, well, um, the A10C2, what a blast! If you're familiar with the aircraft and you own it, and you've been having fun with it. Let me know what your experiences are. Uh, I'm still getting my head around uh, relearning a lot of stuff and um, trying to get to grips with the submenus and things to get the aircraft armed up and working appropriately. I've been watching a lot of um, Ralphie Dude's videos, the, the tutorials that he's putting out right now, which are phenomenal. And I know how much work he's put into those videos because even a simple video like this one, which really isn't too complex, can take quite a lot of time the layers of detail that he's pre he's been putting in his videos and the hours of footage that he's probably got there um, really make them very professional very easy to follow very easy flowing he's got a good cadence and style of course so it's easy to, easy to understand him he's got a lot of experience of course both in youtube production and of course with the air aircraft which um, he's been flying for 10 years or more now so there are fewer experts right now with a DCS module than than him, uh, so you'd be foolish not to, if you're learning, not to um, have a look at them because you'll find them very helpful. I certainly have, and I can't praise him enough for the contribution to the community because I think it's very valuable. And it also gave me a new respect and love for the ATNC. I think it's a wonderful aircraft, even though it doesn't fly fast and it's uh, not going to break speed records or you know. Um, climb to height uh, speed uh, records it is a very versatile aircraft and i really enjoy flying it and it lends itself to some interesting challenges so all right we'll stop there thank you for tuning in again for a shorter video this week as i said not a lot going on in terms of uh, uh, implementation of specific things but the each of the things that we've talked about today are huge contributions to the game and i know there are no mean feats for eagle dynamics so i want to thank them again for the for keeping us informed and, and working on things that the community loves and cares about and is looking forward to seeing in the game. Other than that, carry on flying. Stay safe out there, guys. I hope you're all doing very, very well. I really appreciate all the likes and subscribes. And don't forget to comment and mash that thumbs up or thumbs down button. Uh, YouTube doesn't really care either way. Be honest. I don't, you know, I'm not going to be too offended. Some people do like to be offensive. And of course, uh, some, some comments have to be uh, censored if you're going to you know, do this swearing filled rants, those probably aren't going to get published because it's not part of my, um, you know, it's, it's basically they're blocked off automatically. I'm not even going to address them. Um, but if you've got uh, feedback and you want to talk about the game and discuss with other people in the community, there's a lot of passionate people here. Feel free to, to do that and talk about the video's contents and other things you'd like to see in DCS World or other things you'd like to talk, have me talk about. Um, that's all helpful as well it gives me ideas I'm not a fountain of uh, ideas all the time um, I have some creative juices but I have very little time <laughs> it's the other problem so all right we'll wrap it up thanks guys take care prickly hedgehog out we'll see you next time carry on flying guys <laughs>